Welcome to the Missouri History Museum's Virtual Learning Day for January 2021. This video is part of our virtual craft room, so if you get an opportunity, please check it out. My name is Ellie, and our theme for January is St. Louis Stories, or History, Storytelling, and Lore, which are all great ways to communicate with your audience. You can do this, too, with poetry. Poetry is a form of expression. It connects to the writer's feelings and thoughts, but is also known to connect with the reader's emotions, like joy and sadness and anger and love, etc. Blackout poetry or redacted poetry was made popular in recent years, 2005, by writer and author Mr. Austin Cleon. After his work gained publicity, the budding genre exploded into new movement. However, the lineage of blackout poetry or redacted poetry goes back to the 18th century. So we are going to make our own connections by using our imaginations and interpretations to create blackout poetry. Blackout poetry is free verse poetry, meaning there are no rules, no rhyme or rhythm, but are still considered artistic expressions. Now, before we get started, I would like to show you some of my samples of Black Eyed Poetry, just to provide you with a visual idea of the art, because everyone is not familiar with the art or the name. This is one that I have here, and here is another one. These are my samples of Black Eyed Poetry. So, you guys have had the visual. Are you ready? Let's go. So grab your materials and let's get started. Blackout poetry is the visual deconstruction and recreation of poetry. You will learn that words can inspire visual imagery as well as demonstrate understanding and enhance literary skills. You know, during my research, I found that many poets and writers use blackout poetry to help with writer's block, restore creativity, and writing energy. Artists like Maya Angelou, born right here in St. Louis, Missouri. She was an American poet. She was a civil rights activist. Thomas Lanier Williams III, known by his pen name Tennessee Williams, was raised right here in St. Louis, Missouri, and was an American playwright. And let us not forget Mrs. Irma Rombauer. She too was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and was an American cookbook author. Each of these artists have made lasting cultural influences around the country and world. They are also listed on the St. Louis Walk of Fame, located in the Delmore Loop. And I am sure that each of these artists have used Black Eyed Poetry once in their lifetime. So now, you are a bona fide artist of Black Eyed Poetry. Are you guys ready to get started? All right. First, you need to grab your, I don't know if you're going to use newspaper or if you're going to use uh, context from a book. So you want to make sure that you have what you're going to be looking at. I decided to use a newspaper. What do you want to do first? You want to look at your text. And as you're scanning your text, I want you to be able to Find words that are interesting to you, words that pop out to you, that grab your attention. And you are going to circle them in pencil. I want you to use pencil first because you may want to go back and make some revisions. So take a couple moments, scan your paper. Don't forget, you're looking for those words that pop out to you. Take a couple minutes, let's find some words. And remember, you're going to circle them with pencil. We will use the, the Sharpie later. Okay, guys, once you have identified those words, now you can use your Sharpie. Go back and circle those same words that you circled earlier in pencil, but now you're going to use your Sharpie. So let's circle those. It should kind of look like this, guys. Now, 
before you add any imagery or anything to your paper, I want you to look at it because your poem or your comment, it should be appearing now. You should be able to see the words that you have chosen, all right? So take a look, review it. Now, if you are satisfied, this is the time you want to use that flexibility if you want to include some imagery, like I tried with this coffee cup here. I don't know if you can see that. And this says that most people love the idea that warm feelings are especially important this year. This one here, I took this out of a school book. And this is a little girl, her name is Libby. And it says that Libby recycles aluminum to save energy and to help the world. So if you are satisfied, let's take one more look at it. And this is the time where you want to include, these are optional guys, but you are welcome to use markers, whatever you decide to do. That's what I did with this one. I just used a bunch of colored markers, kind of blacked out the words I didn't, okay? Now, since you are satisfied, let's go back. And if you just want to go and black out the words that you do not want to use, please do so now. And that's just simply marking through those words. But if you want to be creative and you want to add a little flavor, include some imagery into your blackout poetry. Right now, guys, I'm just blocking these guys out, these words here that we are not going to be using. And of course, yours doesn't look like mine, because hopefully you guys are adding some imagery to it. Once you're done, guys, you can, or if you don't want to, it's fine. Just kind of clip it out a little, like I did with these over here, cutting this out. And you just may want to paste it onto some construction paper, like I did with these right here. See, I use some construction paper. Preferably black would be cool, but I mean, it's your choice. Please decide on however you want to do it. And all you need to do is just glue it to the construction paper. So guys, are you good? Because I believe now you guys are all bona fide artists of blackout poetry. As always, we would love to see your creations. And you can share your poetry by tagging us at hashtag MoHistoryLearn and hashtag KeepMakingHistory. Thank you so much for joining us. Please check out the other Craft Room videos as well as more online learning opportunities we have on our website. Remember to keep making history. Bye.